Alright, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're covering the Cryptid. So, the Cryptid is a really cool character. It has a lot of text, but for the most part, we can focus in on a few things that matter most. So we get additional tree spawns, and like the pacifist, but for trees instead of for guys, we gain extra material and XP at the end of the wave for every tree that's alive. Unlike the pacifist, though, this is actually more than we get for killing the tree, so we really do want to keep trees alive. We also get 3 HP regeneration for every tree that's currently on the map, so again, that can stack up pretty significantly if we're not breaking trees. Our dodge is capped at 70% instead of 60%, not a huge bonus, but definitely useful. And we get extra attack speed whenever we do dodge, but you can pretty much ignore that line of text because the it only lasts until the end of the wave and we want to be avoiding attacks anyways. You won't really typically build your dodge up until the late game, and so this just won't come up too much. On the other hand, we can't use lifesteal at all, pretty much, and we have minus 100 range, which is both an advantage and a disadvantage. It makes it easier for you to avoid killing trees, but of course it makes it harder for you to kill enemies without taking damage. We also, like other economy-focused characters, lose material gain from enemies, so we're really it's really important to get this cash from trees that we are able to use. All right, so the most natural weapon, I think, for the cryptid is the claw. Claw gives you bonus dodge, and we have higher dodge cap, and it also scales with attack speed, which we have an increase to. But since that attack speed increase is so minor, and the enormous range penalty is actually quite painful with the Claw, being at minimum range with the Claw, and it being a weapon that needs to attack multiple times to kill enemies, I find actually makes it hard to not take too much damage when you're using Claws. So, in fact, the weapon that we're going to use is actually the stick. Stick is going to have so much base damage that it will one-shot enemies, and the extra HP will keep you alive while trees are stacking up on the map, and you can build up the HP regeneration that you will use to survive. So, without further ado, let's get into it with the stick. I certainly wouldn't say that Claw is bad, it's actually very good, but I think Stick is going to be the, the easiest and most natural way to win with this character. It's going to be the most consistent as well. So notice that we actually got a ton of extra money because we had four trees, so we are we get two levels and extra materials. Our early game economy is really good, our late game economy is going to be much worse than a normal character would be as more enemies spawn. All right, so we'll start with just some attack speed, and I would love to get a little bit of harvesting, so I'm going to roll once here, and we did find harvesting. Getting harvesting going helps repair our late game economy. I'm going to buy the tree right away. Normally, I think you should roll for weapons only in the first two shops, but because this character gets extra money for in the first couple shops, and trees pay off so quickly in terms of XP and materials, I think it's really good to buy tr any tree items that you see, which you're more likely to see because the cryptid is tagged to care about stuff that gives you trees. Here we will, of course, just buy the stick, and keep on rolling, buy another stick. Stick also has the advantage of being very cheap in the shop, so you can pretty easily get several of them early. I'm going to lock this peaceful bee and roll again. Nothing here, so we'll roll once more. Definitely unlucky here, so I'm going to throw in one more reroll and try to get the stick. We'll lock the bag and lock the stick. Normally, I think you can get four with a fifth locked, but because we were able to buy a tree and got pretty unlucky with which items we rolled, we didn't quite manage to do that. But the tree by itself should be enough to make up for any fewer weapons that we have. One thing that you have to, of course, keep an eye out for is that your your natural inclination is going to be to charge off to try to kill those trees. Obviously, on this character, you want to avoid doing that. We'll still take melee damage, even though the sticks naturally build into it. Other forms of damage increases are better than flat damage for this character, but it's still good, of course, to grab that. We'll take more harvesting and grab this stick, roll again. We're just looking for more sticks. 
we're guaranteed two weapons in the shop, so even with two things locked, it's still very efficient to roll. Now that I have six of them, though, I'm going to just buy these two before rolling again, and we can lock in one more, hopefully. We didn't, but I will lock in Peaceful Bee. I'm also going to lock in the Scar, which I think is particularly good if we find it early on this character, because we get so much XP from trees, and levels are going to be a pretty significant factor in our stat gain, since later game we will have less materials than other characters. In the early parts of a wave, we don't have any healing yet, so we need to be a little careful in the beginning as we build up some trees and build up additional regeneration, we will be able to take damage and heal it up much more quickly. So you can see here, I took a little damage, but now I had so much regeneration that that worked out just fine. I'm going to just grab more harvesting here. Getting it over 20 means it'll start increasing by two per wave. An item to avoid is turrets and landmines, because those can break the trees by accident. So just keep in mind that you want to avoid doing that. Buy both of those, and we will grab the, another stick. I, we definitely don't need to buy Ugly Tooth. We are not going to be applying this slow, but I will buy the Claw Tree. Gummy Berserker would be okay, because we wouldn't mind increasing our range a little, but definitely not locking it here. I'm going to throw in one more reroll because we might find another high level stick, though. Or be able to level up one of our sticks. Sticks level really well because they gain additional damage. They gain a huge amount of additional damage from each other stick. So a level 1 stick effectively has 20 bonus flat damage. A level 2 stick does additional damage and also gives you effectively plus 30 flat damage on that weapon. As you can see, damage that I take early does not heal easily. But now that some trees have spawned, we'll start healing. Other ways to heal on this character are definitely valuable. Also, something... Oh, I accidentally broke that tree. Something to keep in mind is that things like bags and luck are less use... And consumable healing, although it's still good, are less useful on this character because when you're not breaking trees, you are much less likely to pick up consumables or to generate crates. I'll definitely take plus 20 range because just a little bit of extra range makes it a little easier for this character to hit stuff. And here, because it's level 3, we'll take the maximum HP. 4 melee damage is still probably better than 5% attack speed even though we have so much flat damage already. And I'm going to grab bag, stick, lemonade, good finds, all of those. Here... Percent damage is still going to be very valuable for us because we have none right now. So even though we have there's some consideration to wanting to increase our range, head injury is still going to be really good. Cute Monkey, I think, is also quite good on this character because you need ways to heal in the early game. Um, oh, no, scratch that. Sorry, you have 50% fewer material drops. So that combined with the trees means this won't actually trigger as often as it would for other characters. So we, we're going to ignore that. Keep taking bags, I guess we have all of these. We are less likely to gain money from them than other characters are because we're not breaking trees, but they're still pretty good. Obviously, leveling sticks and injection is good. I'll throw in one more reroll here. Nothing else that we want, so let's go on to wave five. What I was saying about the cute monkey, though, does hold for other ways to heal. Obviously, we can't use lifesteal on this character, but um, HP regeneration that we purchase is still pretty good, and any alternative ways to heal, like medical turrets and so on, are quite strong on this character because they can help keep you alive before you build up the regeneration from trees. That said, you need healing less than other... You need to by healing less than other characters do because you have some natural healing. Definitely just going to take this armor with no armor. It's a huge bonus to our defenses. And here I'm going to reroll. We're looking for a level 2 or 3 item, and we did get one, so level 3 melee damage is still really good. Like I said, we don't want to buy the turret. Let's grab the stick, roll again, and keep on rolling. As you can see, we now have less in the way of 
income than most other characters would at this point. So the fact that we are building up our harvesting is really important. Even though we get less value from having enemies, Gentle Alien is still super efficient as an item, so we're going to buy it. We'll buy the stick. Throw in one more reroll. Adrenaline is, of course, really good, um, but especially good for this character because you have some extra dodge synergy. And I will take the bonus luck and lock in the claw tree because that will still be quite good. Crit chance is one of the ways in which we can multiply the enormous flat damage that have using sticks as your weapon gives you. So any non-flat damage, damage steroid is incredibly strong for this character. Because we got very lucky and got a crate from that alien, all our bags have immediately paid for themselves, so that's kind of nice. One of the difficult parts of playing this character, of course, is not just going in on autopilot and charging off to kill all these trees. And your area where you can play gets pretty quickly constrained by the tree spawns so that you have a much harder time finding empty space to play since you want to avoid breaking the trees. You take that, of course. And here, let's go with some attack speed. Lifesteal, obviously not very useful, so I'm going to roll this looking for a better level 2 item, and yeah, it's still early enough that 8 harvesting is good. We'll take Adrenaline, of course, and we'll grab this, roll some more, stick again, Dangerous Bunny. The later you find Dangerous Bunny in a shop, the better, because it's, it's already saved us 15 of the 60 materials we spent on it since we'd already re-rolled. Let's roll again, and roll once more. Uh, I didn't mention this the first time it came up, but obviously you really want to avoid Lumberjack Shirt on this character, since it makes it much easier for you to accidentally break trees. I'll throw in one more reroll and see if there's anything that we want here. Our speed is pretty bad right now, but increasing our armor I think is still pretty important, so I'm going to grab this helmet, lock the leather vest, get on to the next level. Even though we've taken a few items that decrease our maximum HP, it's still pretty good just because we're using the primitive weapons, and which is one reason that the stick is so valuable for this character. Main priority at this point is getting just a little bit of additional healing to supplement our natural regeneration from the trees, and getting some extra speed and boosting our dodge. So... Probably speed is the most important, followed by dodge. To chase these guys down while not breaking the tree. Oh no, I killed that one. No, I'm sorry. So as you can see, like normally you'd probably expect to have around 3 or 350 after this level. We're starting to fall a little behind the economy curve. I can increase that by grabbing harvesting here. And our max HP is still doing pretty well, so I think we can still definitely take some harvesting and be happy with that. We'll grab this leather vest. Do I want this HP regeneration um, from the mushroom? I think it's pretty expensive, but it does get us to a high level of regeneration sooner, so I think that's worth taking. Cyclops Worm is still good. We can bring our range back up later. And then here, even though we do want to increase our HP regeneration. The maximum HP from broken, broken Mouth is too powerful to pass up. I will definitely also take Defective Steroids and Cake, and we'll go on to Wave 8. By the time we fight an Elite, I'd like to have about 60-ish HP. Accidentally stomped that spawn, so that's a little less money that we got. I didn't think I was actually standing on the X, but apparently I was. You can see that damage that we take early, it, it doesn't recover very rapidly. Oh man, I need to increase my speed because my my dodging is more difficult. Also because this is my first recording back from a week-long break. I am not playing quite as well as I am used to, but this is a powerful and fun character. So that should help carry us through it, even if I walk into some enemies a little more than I should. Obviously, a loot alien is great when we have three bags, which is an incredibly lucky find. Um, increased luck is great. 
the minus melee damage is barely a penalty for this character since we have so much flat damage. And here, I'll just take this 3 HP regeneration. Getting that going earlier is really nice. Gonna definitely grab some speed. In fact, we're just buying out this whole shop. Let's reroll. Tentacle is another way to heal that doesn't involve regeneration or lifesteal, so that's an excellent find for us as well, and Gentle Alien and Tentacle for sure. And here we get a lot of sticks, which is really nice, so let's grab this, combine, grab this, and obviously Whetstone is really good on most characters, but doesn't do anything for us because we have so much negative lifesteal. Technically, if you somehow found like 110% lifesteal, you could build this up, but obviously that's not happening in most normal runs. Pocket Factory does nothing for us, so even though that's an item I like a lot, we obviously don't want it on this character, and similarly we want to avoid turrets or any autonomous attackers on this character. Additionally, things like Alien Eyes or Baby with a Beard type items, Explosion Effects, all really bad because they'll break our trees. Wave 9, normally an incredible farming wave for every character, but because we have 50% fewer drops, this character benefits less from it. Still doing pretty well, though. One thing that we haven't found is more trees. We've only found one. And because this character is tagged with things that care about trees spawn more often, you can often expect to find more than that. But I can't complain too much because we found a bunch of other economic boosts as well as decent harvesting. Oh, I stood too close to that tree and one-shot it. Definitely should have left that one alive if I could. It's not a big deal if you accidentally break a couple trees, but obviously you should try to avoid it. Take Gentle Alien up to 500 here, which is nice. I'm going to reroll this looking for higher level items, and I'll take armor over flat damage at this point. If this were percent damage or attack speed, I'd take it, but... Armor is going to be more valuable for us right now. And then here, we're going to take the attack speed. This is our lowest, the lowest of our damage boosting stats right now. And even though 10 harvesting would be good, I think getting our damage up before we fight the wave 11 elite is going to be more important than any of those other things. Definitely grab the metal and the peaceful bee. Not taking the blood leech because the 2 HP regeneration is not worth minus 4 harvesting for us and we can't use the lifesteal at all. Coupon, really good, of course. And even though it decreases our melee damage, Schmoop, I think, is going to be pretty good for us here because the maximum HP is quite valuable and we do use the HP regeneration. Lure is going to be great, so I'll grab that, obviously, with all of our bags. Each of these is also worth 45 materials, which is incredible. We'll take another Peaceful Bee, boost our harvesting, and we probably can't afford anything, so I won't throw in a reroll here. Having already rerolled twice is probably better just to save my money. Again, I have to exercise some discipline and not hair off to try to beat up those trees. Let's kill this guy before he runs near a tree, if we can. Trying to move around without getting too close to the trees while looking for the other loot alien spawn. There he is, down to the left. All right, we'll probably break that one tree. No, it even survived. All right, good job, tree. Good dodging. At this point, our HP regeneration is so solid that we can just tank these a lot of these enemies as well, which is the point you want to arrive at on this character. All right, uh, I'm not going to take the weird ghost because we're fighting an elite next wave. So even with uh, some natural regeneration, this would be too dangerous. Hunting trophy, on the other hand, is going to be pretty good. Our crit chance is not great right now, but we're getting it early. So now we can prioritize building some crit chance. And here I'll take some percent dodge. Our dodge is now 36%, which is half of our dodge cap. Upgrade our stick. Take the shady potion, even though... It does decrease our regeneration, but luck is really good for this character. Keep rolling. Night Goggles gives us a ton of crit chance and also helps repair our range for some fairly minimal penalty. So this is going to be pretty nice for this character. We'll definitely grab that and roll again. And 
yeah, I'll keep taking dodge and harvesting from the peaceful bees. We have found so many of these, five peaceful bees. If I could, you know, guarantee this on every character, we'd be so happy. I'm going to combine these and buy another stick. Roll again. And another hunting trophy? I mean, sure. I don't mind if I do. Obviously, we want to increase our crit chance a lot now, but that's still pretty good. And we won't be able to buy anything, so I'm going to sit on 25 materials. Let's head in and fight the elite. All right, this one is just a one that chases you and attacks, so really shouldn't be too bad for this character. Definitely, elites are pretty dangerous for this character because your regeneration does take a long time to come online, but ones that come after you aren't going to be as difficult since we can chase them down even with our low range. Or let them chase us down, I guess. I tanked a little bit of extra damage there at the end because I got myself stuck against the wall of the arena. Slightly bad dodging, but that wasn't too bad. The hardest one to fight probably for this character is the crocodile because... It's just really difficult for melee characters, and especially difficult for this character with its range penalty. The That's the one that charges at you while constraining your movement. I stood right on that tree and killed it. Um, and just is really tough for ranged, or for melee characters while being the easiest one for ranged characters. But, alright, 12% damage, and we only get 6% attack speed, but that's still really good for the... For, our character, mostly because the percent damage is so valuable given our enormously high flat damage from just using sticks as our weapon, and I'll just take the level 3 max HP here. Crit chance is something we definitely want since we have two hunting trophies, which have only given us 45 materials so far, but definitely will continue to give value over the rest of the run. I'll take the wheelbarrow here. Our armor could use a little boost, but that's still pretty good. We obviously don't care about losing the lifesteal, so I'll definitely take banner here. Roll again. And take broken mouth. Roll again. We don't really want any of those other ones. Stick. Additional melee damage is great, of course. And keep rolling. And we can upgrade the stick. I'll keep buying peaceful bees. <laughs> Man. Six peaceful bees. That's so many. And we have all epic level sticks, which is incredible. Have to say this build is coming together very nicely because we've gotten so much dodge and harvesting from the peaceful bees that our economy is keeping up. Even with this character's slightly weaker economy and our dodge is quite high already. Also, we have the massive economic boost of having double hunting trophy. So any crit chance we build is incredibly strong for our income. Oh, uh, nope. Didn't mean to kill that tree. At this point, it's sometimes hard because the waves last long enough and enough trees spawn to avoid killing trees, but we also have so many defensive stats that I can just focus on avoiding killing trees rather than avoiding taking hits from enemies, at least on non-elite waves. This character has... this build has come together tremendously. This is why we build stick on this character instead of claw, because then you can one-shot enemies. It gives you a little more leeway. Definitely will want to bring my speed back up, but of course armor and HP is going to be great. And I'll in continue to increase our dodge, getting close to dodge cap now. With the blindfold as well. Little muscly dude, also really good. Keep on rolling. I'll take the tentacle, of course, because the we are doing a crit synergy build in addition to our dodge synergy build. We basically have all the synergies on this character. White Flag is worth mentioning for this character because, like the other characters that have 50% income reduction from enemies, the minus 5% enemies is less of a penalty and the harvesting is pretty good. I'm not going to take it here because we have hunting trophies and tentacles and stuff that all really care about having a lot of enemies on the field. So we'll, we're going to avoid it, but it's an item that's worth looking at on this character and often only on this character. Metal Detector is also worse for this character because we're, we have fewer chances to double materials since fewer materials spawn. That said, luck and everything is still pretty good, so I might take it anyways. I think we're going to avoid taking it. Energy Bracelet, it's a very inefficient way to buy crit chance, but... Crit chance is so valuable for us right now that I'm still going to buy it. 
and here I will buy the wheelbarrow, lock these two items, and go to the next wave. We're pretty much not missing anything at this point. Our income is going to be really high just from the hunting trophies. We have 50% dodge and 90 max health, so our defensive stats are already really solid, and this character provides all of its own healing, so we don't really need to build any of that. Honestly, uh, also because sticks give you so much damage natively, we don't really need to build that much damage. We could stop buying items right now and still be able to win the, way win the game. Um, I don't even think it would be that hard. I'm not going to do that, but I think that would be kind of fun. And it's worth thinking about how well this build has come online. You obviously don't need the build to come together this well in order to win with this character, but um, it's really fun when it does. Actually, speed is one thing we were missing, so having found that, we're doing even better. Let's grab Claw Tree, Broken Mouth, and Silver Bullet. Keep on rolling. I'll take a little bit more luck, for sure. Cyberball is kind of interesting because you can build percent damage for this character, and it won't hit trees. This The random attack can never hit trees, as far as I know, so it's not going to accidentally break trees for you. I don't think it's particularly good because we haven't built a lot of percent damage, but it's worth mentioning as an item that you can build on this character. Dodge from the Chameleon at 3% dodge. This is too inefficient a way to buy it, so I'm going to avoid that. On the other hand, Lure is going to be really good, so let's buy that and lock another Lure. Vigilante Ring will also have plenty of time to pay for itself, so I'm going to buy that as well. Um, it's going to provide something like 15% damage. I guess, yeah, we'll get it wave 14, so it'll provide 15% damage by the end of the game. That's still quite good. The most important thing for us here is, of course, not to let too many of the ranged enemies build up. So whenever we kill a slug, we want to stick around and kill the ranged enemies. Um, since they can force you to move around and chase them, they can act cause you to accidentally break trees like we did there. And I also want to find and take out any loot aliens. Luckily, we got that one in only one hit, so it's, it's totally fine. We're getting so much income from these hunting trophies, it's ridiculous. I'm really trying to look for the loot aliens, though. More than I am trying to dodge. I accidentally broke that tree, which is a problem, but what can you do? I didn't see the other loot alien. We might have killed him without me noticing. Uh, I guess I got four boxes, so probably I killed it without noticing. I'll definitely take Sad Tomato here. Having high base regeneration is still pretty good. And yep, we'll take percent damage. We'll take percent damage. We won't take lifesteal because obviously it doesn't do anything. Do I want armor or attack speed more? I think attack speed is still going to be better. Definitely take this and this. Even though it's a horde wave, we'll still, we should still be able to take out the lure alien no problem. I'll continue to buy regeneration and I'll buy a little more dodge. We're getting close to dodge cap here. Silver Bullet will be really good as well, and I'm not going to reroll again. We're going into a Horde Wave. We should have so much money from a Horde Wave with the Hunting Trophy, so that's going to be really nice. Broke that tree by accident. So I do need to pay a little more attention to avoiding doing that. That said, I can just run straight into all the enemies and still be fine because our regeneration is so high. I think I got both loot aliens, but I'm still keeping a watch out for them because we, we have two crates picked up, but one of them could easily have just come from some enemies. Our effective maximum HP is incredibly high because we have 100 max HP and 65% dodge, so that increases our max HP by 65%. Or, sorry, by 200%, because only one-third of attacks is gonna, are going to land. 
I will definitely take this. We wouldn't buy it, but it's still just some free attack speed. I don't want to decrease my dodge, so I'm going to pass on the little frog here, but I'll definitely take attack speed or crit chance attack speed. We can reduce our range a little further now that we have our damage so high, reducing our range is much less of a penalty and our survivability so high. So having this incredible attack speed boost because our dodge cap is also really high is going to be really good. So this is one of the best items we could have found. I'm in fact just going to buy this entire shop. Take our free reroll. We'll grab the defective steroids as well and reroll again. And nothing here that I want, so I'll roll again. Leather vest, of course, really good. I'm going to continue to combine and buy more sticks. And we'll buy this energy bracelet as well. Again, an inefficient way to buy crit chance, but with 50% crit, we're going to be getting so much healing and so much money from our crits. We don't use the lifesteal, but 20% dodge. This means that we can go way over dodge cap. I actually don't think it's worth buying the cape here. Even if we buy items that decrease our dodge, we don't need to be 20 over dodge cap. So I'm just going to roll again and we'll buy this and or we'll lock this and buy this go to wave 16 i can't believe it's only wave 16 also i keep thinking it's much later in the run this might be the most powerful build i've ever had actually <laughs> gonna use that as the YouTube title, get accused of clickbait, and then everyone's gonna watch the video and be like, oh no, that, that wasn't clickbait. <laughs> this is the best build. <laughs> Obviously breaking those trees wasn't great, but I do want to hunt down these brain bugs because they can make enemies a little more dangerous. Not that we're particularly at risk, but still worth playing correctly. It would be really embarrassing if I lost with this character at this point. I'll take the recycling machine. Sure, I think that will still have time to pay for itself. And buy this. Combine and buy this. Grab some more speed and roll again. Get this. Get this. Keep on rolling. Still avoiding the lumberjack shirt, even though the game is trying really hard to give it to me. Definitely a little more armor will be nice, and more luck, of course, is good. Oh, finally, another tree. If we'd gotten that a little earlier, it would have been better, but still really nice. I'm not going to buy handcuffs, because one thing that we do want a little more of is maximum HP, and our melee damage is so high already that I don't think we particularly want the handcuffs right now. Flat damage is just not that valuable for this character at the moment. since we have high level sticks and a bunch of flat damage already. Not that we won't take it when it comes up, of course, but we don't need to go out of our way or put ourselves in some kind of danger in order to buy it. A third hunting trophy would be pretty fun if we get it before too much longer. As you can see, I'm basically ignoring the enemies and just walking right into them, trying to kill as many as we can to make our hunting trophies as powerful as possible. Breaking a few more trees than I'd like, but I think we'll, we'll live somehow. All right, 9% uh, crit chance, sure. At this point, we don't need to increase our crit chance that much more, because it it's going to stack negatively with itself, but I'll still take it when it's there. And our dodge is now over cap as well. Giant's Belt, sure. Uh, this is some more critical hit synergy. So while our damage is already really high, this is some additional bonus damage. We don't mind it. I'll take this charcoal as well. Like I said, we don't really need melee damage, but it can still be good. And a little bit more luck. Great. I will also lock this garden. This gives us a little bit of additional healing before our HP regeneration has come online. 
All right, we did get the hardest elite to fight for this character, but because our damage is so high and we have Giant's Belt, I think uh, we're going to kill it really fast anyways. The 500 damage criticals are putting in a lot of work, I would say. <laughs> have to stay clear of the entire left side of the map, basically, because there's so many trees over there. But I, I sure don't have to stay clear of enemies right now. <laughs> Our HP regeneration, with one second left in the wave, we have 62, so we're getting five a second. Uh, exoskeleton, definitely. That's an incredible find for us. Armor, crit chance, and speed lots of things that we want. And yeah, I'll still take eight flat melee damage. Uh, peaceful B, significantly less useful at this point now that we're dodge capped and near the end of the wave, so I'm going to pass on it here. Although, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to buy it because getting to eight peaceful Bs is just funny to me. And community support, we probably won't get a ton of attack speed out of this because we're killing enemies so fast, but I think it's still too good to pass up on. I'm going to lock in blindfold uh, but not Shady Potion, because luck will be less useful to us. And of course, Tractor isn't going to do anything for the last wave. I once again just want to drop a thank you to everyone who's gotten this far in this video and has been watching all of my videos. Um, you might have seen in my post that... We passed the threshold to apply for YouTube monetization this week. Um, so soon, I guess I might start seeing a couple bucks a month in ad revenue, which would be kind of fun. Certainly not going to be breaking the bank anytime soon, but nice to have a little bit of tangible reward as well. Just sitting in all of these enemies, just watching the cash roll in from the hunting trophies. Just keep an eye on the top left, see how much money we're getting. All right, uh, definitely not taking the pocket factory. I will just grab some attack speed here. Nine peaceful bees? Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, how much money have we gotten from these hunting trophies also? We've gotten 1,500 from the hunting trophies, so that's quite good. Let me keep rolling. Uh, you know what? I'm going to buy the third hunting trophy. Even though it's not going to do anything, just having all three I think is really funny. Let's grab this, grab the stick. What I really want is to find some more of uh, my tenth peaceful bee. <laughs> Combine this and grab another stick. We have now have five legendary sticks. I'm not going to grab the bait just because we're going into the, the final wave here. Take the stick and roll and oh man I can't afford the exoskeleton. That would have been so nice. But we'll still take some flat damage and go on into the final wave. See how fast we kill these guys. I'm suspecting fairly quickly. Alright that one's dead. Come back! Come back! Alright, well, that's the Cryptid. Uh, I think this character is extremely strong and also super fun to play. Obviously, some builds are not going to come together quite as well as this one did, but it's still an incredible build for us. I've got nine peaceful bees, three hunting trophies, three lures, so much economy on this character. And if you can repair this character's economy, you end up incredibly strong. Alright, my friends, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato class guides and other strategy game content, and I will catch you next time. Cheers, folks. GG.